Hello Scouts. Um, this is just a quick follow-up to what we were talking about at Godolphin. Um, we don't get that much time with you on a training weekend, so uh, there are some things we just can't go into as much detail as we would like. And a few people asked about uh, diddy bags. And honestly, that is what they're called. So I thought it might help if I showed you what I carry in my sack. This is my ditty bag. Please don't rush out and feel you have to collect everything I've got here. Um, I work with uh, a lot of groups who maybe don't have your experience or don't have the quality of your kit. So um, you probably don't need to carry as much as me. Um, and anyway, it's going to be uh, quite a lot of uh, personal uh, preference in that. Um, there are a few things that are probably common to everybody, and everyone you meet who spends a lot of time uh, in the outdoors, on the mountains or sailing, um, will have a kit like this. If you do a lot of mountaineering yourself, then it's, it's worth putting something together. Um, if the Czech Republic expedition is likely to be a one-off for you, you'll be in a group, so it's probably okay if you just make sure, organise it within the group and make sure that between you, you're carrying something that will get you through a crisis. So these are just some ideas. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so this is what I carry in my ditty bag. A few things that are probably common to a lot of people. And, uh, and then a bunch of things that are just a matter of personal preference. I always carry a spare compass. Um, I did once get into a problem because I'd taken a bit of a fall, sat down heavily on my compass and broken it. So I carry that uh, in the ditty bag now. And like I said, you know, it, I carry stuff for other people as well. So uh, it, it's, it's always worth doing. A spare whistle is pretty much the same idea. These, this is a, a pack of batteries for my head torch and a spare bulb is in there as well. Um, take my word for it, please. I don't want to unwrap it. Uh, it's all bound up in insulating tape to keep it dry so the batteries don't discharge. They're fresh if I ever need to use them. I do change them a couple of times a year. If the torch suffers the same fate as my old compass, if I break it and it's past anything you can fix with a couple of batteries, that's a, a spare torch. It's um, a 6 volt NICAD with uh, an LED bulb. It's it's very very powerful in spite of its size. It's no no trouble at all to <coughs> carry that. <laughs> Shut up. Leatherman tool, or uh, you could carry a Swiss Army knife. Either way, a multi tool that has got all sorts of uses, from cutting your toenails to whittling a dugout canoe. This is uh, just a convenient way of carrying lots of different tapes. <clears throat> okay, those are patches for uh, a thermarest type um, uh, sleeping mattress and the adhesive for it. This is great stuff and obviously it's time I got some more. It's um, tent mending tape or spinnaker tape is just as good. I have patched a favourite tent with that. Uh, it had a rip in a fly sheet, oh god, years ago. And it's kept going strong ever since. It's virtually a permanent repair. repair. It's, it's uh, transparent, uh, easy to apply. I've got it on a coat as well, which I ripped on some barbed wire a couple of years ago. And the coat's still going strong. I use it every day for dog walking. And uh, this is just a convenient way of carrying some uh, duct tape, which has got millions of uses. Uh, 
I know Nathan mended a, a tent at Godolphin. Somebody had a, a broken tent pole and Nathan made a temporary repair with this stuff. Um, a more permanent repair for a tent would be with these sleeves and incidentally it's a convenient way of carrying a, a waterproof pen and that's waterproof paper uh, in case you need to send a message to somebody, make a note, record something. These are two different diameters. You can get them to suit whatever tent you use. Um, and they're brilliant. You may have some trouble um, getting the broken end of a pole to slide in into the sleeve because it does need to be perfectly round to fit in. Um, you can either use the Leatherman or uh, work it down, work the end down, get rid of burrs and edges on a, on a rock. And if you still have trouble getting the sleeve to fit over the broken pole, try heating it in a, over your stove and obviously be careful not to burn yourself. Um, but the metal will expand as it heats and then it should slide on easily and as it cools it will contract and bind onto the pole and make a permanent repair. It's brilliant stuff. Don't try that if you use a tent with carbon fibre or fibreglass poles. They don't respond well to heat. Um, use whatever you've got in your in your kit uh, that would uh, grease the wheels a little. Maybe some butter uh, or cooking oil. There's oil in sardines, sardine cans. I'm not sure that's a good enough reason to carry them. Um, Soap is very good on plastic and washing up liquid or um, uh, suntan cream. And if you still can't get the sleeve to slide onto the pole, well, yeah, okay, you might have to uh, shave the pole down a little or, or sand it down. Uh, but try not to do that because um, that weakens uh, fiberglass enormously if you break the surface. This is a pack of, well it's just a small sewing kit. So there's fine cotton for rips in clothing or sewing on buttons. Um, some needles here. A fine one. Buttons and tears. And uh, some healthier sized needles that would go with this line. And that's, this is actually waxed whipping twine that I've stolen off the boat. But fishing line would be just as good. Something like 20 pound monofilament fishing line. And that's good for mending, oh, I don't know, tents, rucksacks, webbing. Paracord, um, good as a spare or an extra guy rope for your tent, good for a washing line, um, just generally binding something up. Uh, you can chop it into lengths to make spare boot laces. <coughs> um, safety pin, and yes, you will have some in your first aid kit. I don't like reading first aid kits because I think you need to know what's in your first aid kit when you need something from there. Um, you need is usually fairly desperate and more to the point you need to know it's actually there so I don't like to raid the first aid kit. It's easy enough to carry one or two of these. I'm told scouts can turn these into fish hooks. I'm sure you can. Uh, but they're also good for taking uh, splinters, boosting uh, blisters. You can even hold your trousers up. I expect you carry a lighter for your transia. Um, but lighters can run out of gas or the flint can go, so I carry a spare one. And then it's Sod's Law that uh, you drop the spare one in a pool of water. So I carry um, matches. And I think I've shown you these. These are lifeboat matches. And I'm told they will even light underwater. Now, God knows why you'd want to start a fire in a lifeboat. I figure you, you've got enough of a problem. And it's even more puzzling why you try to do it underwater but these will light even when they're wet and you saw how difficult it is to get them to go out 
um, they will light and stay alight in a gale. If you can't get them, but I'm sure you can, you can get them in a kit shop or probably online, but you don't need to spend money on that. If you have uh, an old waterproof canister, this is an old 35mm film canister, uh, or um, a, a childproof, waterproof tablet canister would be just as good. You can put ordinary matches in there, uh, maybe bind them together with a, a small rubber band to stop them rattling about and you know stop friction, stop them lighting by accident. Cut away the side of the box, the striker, uh, and then fold that in half with the striker face on the inside. That can go in there too, again, so the matches can't rub on it by accident. And then pack the space out with cotton wool. Because cotton wool is a brilliant um, tinder to help you light a fire or uh, your stove, and it fills the space and stops, stops everything rattling around, just cuts down the chance of it lighting by accident. This is um, a service kit for my stove. I use uh, MSR stoves and I've used them for years and they've never let me down, but I have helped block, unblock, sorry, helped unblock other people's stoves uh, if they have makes that are maybe more uh, temperamental than MSRs. Um, you probably don't need to do that while you're with us. Uh, there's really not much wrong. Uh, can happen to a, a Trangia um, and of course that's all you're allowed to use with us but if you do a lot of uh, mountaineering yourself then you'll probably get a pressurized fuel stove they're much more efficient and if it's anything other than MS than an MSR then it's worth taking a small kit that will probably come with the stove something that will unblock the jet or even a spare jet I have shared tents camped with people who use other stoves and yeah um, it is worth uh, having something like that. I sometimes carry a spare space blanket, I know you'll have one in your first aid kits uh, but I said I don't like reading first aid kits. Uh, got a lot of potential uses. Uh, I once I was camping one time with a group and a guy was putting up his tent, a dome tent, and turned his back on it and it blew away, he went trundling off down the mountain. He came back an hour or so later and it was trashed, the fly sheet was beyond repair. So we tied knots, tied a knot in each corner of uh, a space blanket, stretched it over the top as an extra fly sheet and it worked fine, it looked a bit odd but um, it kept the rain out. They are waterproof. Um, you could use it as a ground sheet under your tent in very boggy, uh, on very boggy ground. It'll carry water. You could even make a bowl out of it with uh, a little imagination. You fold it into a flat square. It makes a good reflector um, in an emergency to attract attention. It'll flash sunlight, or you can flash a torch off it. So I hope that helps. Um, it's just a few ideas. As I said, you don't need to carry as much as I do, and anyway, that's not going to take up a lot of space. And when I've got everything in it, it's way less than 100 grams. Um, so, f for goodness sake, don't feel you have to uh, put together a collection of everything that can possibly go wrong, spares and mending kits and whatever. It's not like that. Uh, most of what's here is very, very versatile got lots of different uses with a bit of lateral thinking. So uh, yeah, most of it costs little or nothing. There's, uh, there are a few things that maybe do cost a bit but we've got the kit shop visit coming and Christmas just around the corner so uh, it might be the right idea to drop a hint or two and help Santa decide what would fit in your Christmas stocking. Talk to us if you've got any other questions, anything else you um, want to ask about. We'd be delighted to talk to you and help out any way we can. Um, so if I don't see you before, uh, see you.
see you at the next training session. Have a good Christmas.